Yeah. Yes. yes we can see it. Great. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. uh, if anyone wants to follow along, just make sure you've downloaded .NET 6. Um, and also there is a repo where I'll stick all the code from today. Um, it's on my GitHub. Um, I'll put that in the chat as well now. Um, so this is the repo. If at the end you want to clone it down or whatever, compare it to what you got. And yeah, that's the download.net six link. I'll put that in the chat as well. And I'll stick these on the YouTube video at the end. So yeah, just make sure you've got .NET 6 installed for your operating system. If you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, you should be able to follow along as well. Um, I've cloned my folder to my uh, to my machine, and I'm just going to get straight stuck in because I've got 90 minutes to try and do something. Um, so the other thing is we're going to use a template website that we're just going to implement. And the website that I found that looked quite nice is this one. Don't know how it looked. Yeah, this is it. So it's from the start bootstrap. It's just a simple portfolio, one pager, but we can turn it into multiple pages if we have time. Uh, we're going to look at using the block list editor, things like that. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to build on this on this quick fire uh, thing. So all right, let's get stuck in then. So I, I the, where I found this from was uh, on start bootstrap and then theme and then slash freelancer. So I'll put that in the in the chat as well. And basically, you just download that. It's free to use. The license is MIT. So yeah, always make sure about the license. So we've got the license for that. So we know we're OK to go. And then the other thing to do is we just need to install Umbraco. Uh, so we've downloaded .NET 6 and installed it. So the, uh, to install Umbraco, I've got a link. I'll just well, I'll tell you what, we'll go to my tool that I made. So psw.codeshare.co.uk. This is what I use when installing an, a new Umbraco site. Um, if you go into options, what we want to do here is we want to set it up for this freelancer website. So solution name, I'm just going to call it freelancer. Uh, project name, freelancer.site. I don't want to include a starter kit because that will defeat the object. Um, I do want to include a solution file and my template version of Umbraco. I could use the release candidate version, but I'm not that brave. So I'm just going to leave it on the latest stable. Um, if I was worried about it, I could pick that specific version as well, but latest stable is fine. Um, the database types, so Umbraco supports different database types. Um, and what I want to do is just use SQLite, which is an embedded database. Um, and it will work on Mac, Linux and everything like that. I'm going to leave these as default because I'll use these to log into Umbraco. So this code, if I click on this, this will now generate the code that I need to put into the command line to set up my website. So I just do copy script. I go to the folder that I cloned from the GitHub repo and then I open up the terminal and then I just paste it in. So this will do the work for us and um, it's installed uh, already installed 10.2.1. Yeah, so that's the version that we wanted to use. So it will just go through and all those commands that we copied will run one after the other. And then in a, in a minute or so, it will have a running um, empty Umbraco site, which will be the starting point for us. If we have a look in the folder, um, we can see that the files are getting added. We get an Umbraco folder. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry about that. I hope the mute button worked. Um, all right, so let's just have a look, see what's happening on the command line. So we've got our website is built. Um, it's created all the database tables and everything on the SQLite database. So I'm just, because I'm using Windows Terminal, I can just control click on that uh, link there. And that's opened up this. I click on open up Embraco and then I put in my login details. So admin at example.com is what we used. And just to show you in the options, that's these details here. Because uh, I did unattended install. So it's actually 
done all those steps for me instead of having to go through a wizard to install Umbraco. So we're in, we're at this point, um, we have an empty Umbraco, hopefully everyone else is at this point as well. If you fall behind or anything, just remember it's being recorded, you can catch up on YouTube. Uh, so with an Umbraco website, we've got a content section, a media section, settings, packages, users, members, forms, and translation. In this video, we'll probably focus on content media settings. We won't look at users, members, or anything like that, but just a quick rundown. A user, at the moment, I'm set up as an administrative user. You can add different groups. You can also add different start nodes. So in the content area, maybe you'd have a blog section. You can have users that just start from the blog and media and things like that can do the same. Um, but yeah, as I say, we are short on time. So we'll just do enough to get us through this uh, demo. So first things first then, we need to create ourselves a document type um, for the homepage. Um, with document types, I learned from Mark Goodson and Lee Kelleher from their Atomic Design in Umbraco talk that they did. You can still find that on Vimeo. Um, so it's nice to group these things. So I'm going to enter a folder name of pages. I'm going to do some others as well. So that's compositions. So um, I'll explain the compositions as we get to them. Just create these folders uh, as we go. So this is folders. Another one called components. And then another one called elements. And like I say, as we use them, I'll explain what they are. So we've got five folders here. We're going to create in the pages one. We'll click on these three dots and do document type with template. I'm going to call it home. And I'm going to search for the home icon. In here on Umbreco, you can choose all different colors. Um, but I'm going to pick blue for this. And just for now, I'm doing save. One thing I don't think I said is when I choose this document type with template, you will automatically create, generate a template for it. And you can see that by clicking on templates here and see that there's a default template called home. Uh, I've already broken my own rule, so I'm going to delete this and start again. And I'm going to create it again, but this time I'm going to call it home page. I like to specifically say it's a page so that if I'm creating a render, um, a render controller later that um, is using what we call root hijacking, I know that it's called home page controller um, as opposed to just home controller. And it's specific that I know it's, oh, it's a render controller here. So home page. So I'm going to try and create all of my pages with the naming convention of page. Um, I've also got here a alias for this document type. So we'll just click save on that. So this home page, we'll pick the icon again. So we have a home page. Now that home page has a template. The template is called home a home page as well. We can open that from here. This is called the infinite editor in Umbraco. Um, with templates, what's really good is to create yourself a master. First of all, I'm going to delete the one that I didn't want anymore, the one called home. And then I'm going to create a new template called master or site layout or whatever you want to call it. Just save that. And in the home page one, I can click on the button here and just choose master as its, uh, as its master page. So this will inherit its layout from master. And in master, we just do at render body. And that will then pass through, it, it will render whatever's on this and then it will call the template below and render that. So if we were to create this home page in the content section, first we'll try, we won't be able to. So we'll go to settings again and we'll have a look on home page and go to permissions and then we'll allow as root and then save that. And then if we go back to content, and then click on this, we can actually create it. So that's how you allow these things to be created at the root. I'm going to call it home, save and publish. It's taken a minute or so just to save and publish this. I don't know if anybody can hear my baby in the background crying, bless him. I, I think he might be trying to get to me, but he doesn't understand. Um, so my wife will be taking them on the school run soon anyway. So we've got an empty website. So um, at the moment with that website we've created, we've not opened it in a, an 
an editor of, or anything. So I'm going to right click on it. So with that code, it created a solution file for uh, Visual Studio. But what I can do as well is open this in Visual Studio code. So I'm going to do that. I just right clicked on my freelancer.site folder. And now I'm in this and I can see the templates and things like that. So we've got the master one and we've got the home page. So if we wanted to, we could just do H1 at model.name. Now uh, model is what we use in MVC, model view controller. Um, so this is using the model from the page and it's saying we want the name property. In Umbraco, the model on this page by default, as it's an Umbraco view page, will be something called an iPublish content. So it will take all the properties from this document type and put them into a model for us. And then we can use that model and render out properties. So if we um, now go back to the front end and refresh, we can see we've got home. So we've got the name. So we're starting to do something there. Um, we could, if we wanted to, just go into the home page here. Now we will use compositions. Um, so let's create ourselves a composition. And let's call this um, basic content property. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it basic content property. And already there's an icon pre selected there. If I do pink and then submit, this is the icon we use for compositions. Um, and I'll click on save. So a composition is an element type. And this one is not what you'd use for a page itself, it's for building up the pages. Um, and so what we try and do nowadays, instead of using inheritance where you might have created a, a page and it has certain properties and then you create ones under it. Well, instead of doing that, we build up the page's properties by picking them from different ones, a bit like interfaces in .NET. I don't know if you're new to .NET or not, but... Um, I won't go into all of the things that we can do on this, but so that's our basic content property. And on our home page, I can choose that and I can pick it. So I've created the composition, but I didn't create any properties on it. So if I click, go back to it, click on this and go to content and then add property. And I'll just call this body text and then enter a description. It's always good to add a description when you build an Umbraco site, just to help the users. That's the main part about Umbraco. It's a content management system that you build in your way, but you try and make it as helpful as you can. So please enter the content for this page. And then if we click on that and we should do rich text, rich text editor, submit that. So now we've picked that data type. Um, because the home page has chosen to inherit uh, to to use that composition, now it's picked up that property there and save. Um, then one other thing we need to do, if we want to use this, we need to just change some settings so that we can use our models builder um, with IntelliSense as well. So if we go back to uh, Umbraco Melbourne Meetup folder we go into it and we look at the app settings development json we can get to that in here as well and we scroll down and where we've got this uh, umbraco cms after runtime minification we can put a comma in and then speech marks and because there's an umbraco uh, sorry an app settings schema json file it gives you intellisense on the options that you can use on here so we can choose one uh, called models builder and then inside that, we can do another one called models mode. And what I like to use is one called, um, by default, it's in memory auto, by the way. I use source code manuals because I like to run with .NET watch run. So it will pick up my changes as the files change. But when you save a document type, that will then create a file. So then that will pick up a change and then it'll start to do a rebuild and basically restart the site. So that's why I do it manual, so that I expect that to happen. Um, so I've created that. I need to just go back into here. I'm just going to uh, use Control C to stop the site. I'm going to then do what I said with .NET Watch Run. Oh, I'm not in the right folder, so I'm going to CD tab freelancer.site and then I'll do .NET Watch Run. 
So that will restart the site for me. There we go. So the same port that I was using, so the back office should still work and everything like that. It's all the same port. So we're getting an error here, but that's fine. We're going to get, sort that out. Um, so we need to go to settings. If you're ever within a page like this and you can't find the Models Builder tab, click on this settings header above the tree and then go to Models Builder. We need to generate our models. Click on that button. And while we've generated our models, we can see that .NET Watch Run has picked up that change. So it's now doing another build. And this is what I said about it restart the site. So we've got our models. Um, and now this home page shouldn't fail. And it hasn't done. So that's good. And then uh, what we can do is we can go to that template. And in the home page, we can say at um, model dot. And because it knows the model for this is the home page model, we can say body text and it will be there. And as this is an IHTML string, because it's a Rix text data type, we can just output it like this. And then if we go back to here and in the content for the home page in the body text, we can just stick a bit of lorem ipsum. Oh, don't know how to spell. Go on this. I hope uh, the speed's okay for people. I'm, I'm not too quick, but I'm just trying to be a bit speedy so we can get through plenty. Paste that in there, save and publish. Info, click on the link, and now we've got some content. So you can see how you can start adding properties. There's all sorts of different types of properties. Um, I'm going to create another composition called Throwaway, uh, and it's going to be another composition type here, change that icon to pink. Um, I won't call it throw, I call it test properties. And we'll just create a few and just see what they do. So add a tab, call it test. We'll delete this after you see. Um, we'll, so we'll just do test, uh, we'll do a drop down. So um, I'm not going to put a description on all of them, but please do on yours, uh, drop down. So in here, we can do a drop down. We can use a drop down that's already configured or we can create a new one. So we'll just create a new one and we'll do favorite color. Oh no, I don't know. Uh, we'll, I like to do this, so drop down color. Drop, uh, yeah, colors, I'll do. Add one, red, green, blue, etc. Submit that and then submit and save. So now we've got that property on there. We can go to the home page and we can choose composition, click on that, test properties, save, and then go to home. And then we can go to the test tab. You see, we've got these tabs here. So um, we can then choose our favorite color, do save and publish. Then on our template, we can, oh, there's two ways to get into the template. So we can get through Visual Studio Code or whatever IDE you're using, or you can go through from here and do it. But what we might want to do is just do a, a div uh, style equals color, and then do at model dot uh, color. Uh, or what, what did I call it? I can't remember. I've forgotten that bit already. Body, uh, test, uh, oh, drop down. I just called it drop down. It's not very helpful, not a meaningful name, really. Uh, anyway, I'm still in there. So, model dot drop down. Uh, when you're doing it in the browser like this, you don't get the IntelliSense that you would have got in Visual Studio Code. So, whilst it's good to know about this, it's not very good to edit using this. So, we'll go back to the front end of the page, we'll refresh and it doesn't like it. So error occurred. And the reason why it doesn't like it is because it doesn't know about drop down and, and any prize, well, prizes for guessing what? Click on that, Models Builder, Generate. It told us it was out of date. So we knew it was out of date. We've just generated it. We'll have a look on here. It says, do you want me to restart? I always click A for always. Right, so now 
on the front end of the site, we should see that the text for that paragraph has gone red. So um, we can just change it again and just see again. Blue. So yeah, bit of uh, fun with templates there. So like I say, we're going to scrap that because we don't need it. So we'll just, just know there's lots of different data types and properties you can add and build up your pages and tabs and things. You can even reorder the tabs and properties. Uh, but let's try and implement this page. So I'm just going to go to compositions. I'm going to delete test properties. OK, save. Click on this and save and publish again. I'm going to go to uh, settings, models builder, generate models again, just to get rid of that. And then I'm going to go in here and just remove it. And we don't want any of this because we're going to try and implement that website. So that's just a bit of the basics about Umbraco. We've got it installed. We added some properties and things like that. Now we want to go to our folder that we downloaded the site from. And inside that folder, I've unzipped it. And in there, all we've got is a really simple site. We've got an assets folder, a CSS file, a JS file, and an index file. And that index is basically the HTML that we're going to use for our website. So we'll copy these three. And these have to go, oh, not control X, control C. These have to go in the um, www route. These static assets do. So they go in the www route of our freelancer site project. So if we go into this freelancer.site and then you've got that www route. Um, and then we've got the HTML. So let's edit this and have a look. I'm just going to copy this HTML. Um, yeah, basically I'm going to copy all of this HTML. I'm going to put this in our master page. So we've got our master there. I'm just going to ignore what was already there and save that. Now this won't work straight away, but we can have a look and see how close it is. So I've just saved that in the master, not in the home for now. And then let's have a look on the front end of the site. Probably hasn't worked. Yeah, it's not worked. Oh, there's no render body. Yeah, I should have put that in. So we'll go back up here. In the body, I'll just do at render body. Save that. So it's good, these helpful error messages. Well, there you go. Website built. I think we can call it a day now. It's all there. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, I've seen some contractors have, have uh, delivered an Umbraco site a bit like this. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, I quite like it when you can, wow, already it's like interact, it's there. And all I did was copy something in. Um, I'm just going to do control zero so it's not too zoomed in on this. But yeah, so this is what we're going to do. And we're going to make this all content editable, editable. And that's the beauty of using Umbraco. Uh, but the first thing what I like to do is um, just separate out what stays in the master, what goes in the um, home page and things like that and on the other pages. So and also make sure that the references to these assets are relative to the root of the site. Uh, whereas like this, if you were in the about page and you had the, re the reference to this assets one, that would fail because it wouldn't find it because it would be looking in at about slash assets. So what I like to do is just do a find and replace. So I'm going to have a look for assets and replace it with speech marks, um, comma, like that, basically. Replace all. And then what else? There might be JS. Yeah, replace that with slash JS. Uh, you can do at URL dot content or something as well. But when it's already a static asset, you don't need to use that. Uh, and there's also something called smidge, but probably won't have time to get into that. But that it does bundling and minification. Um, so and then images. Let me just have a look at what the folder's called. C oh, CSS. We'll have a look in CSS. That that will probably take care of it now, I think. So yeah, any like that. So it's using Font Awesome, 
It's using some Google fonts. It's using the, the CSS style sheet that came with it. And then at the bottom, it's using um, this custom JavaScript. If we get as far as building the contact form, we got, then we'll remove this because we don't need it. We can just use um, Umbraco. And it's using the Bootstrap bundle for version 5.1.3. And I didn't see the reference to Bootstrap in the CSS, actually. Anybody see that? So I'm not sure how it's how it's referencing Bootstrap, but maybe it's part of that bundle. I don't know. Anybody know the answer to that? Put it in the chat. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, so now I've done those changes, we'll just save that and we'll have a look at it on the front end again. Just see if it's still working. Yeah, it's still working. So that's good. So next thing to do is to start slicing these things up into separate um, parts of the site. So um, the obvious one is the navigation. So we can just grab this navigation and we can put it into either a partial view or a component. Um, in my videos, I've not got to components yet, but um, we can, let's just do it. Let's just do it in a component. So if I click on this and then I click on new folder, I'll be able to create a new folder at the root of the site. Uh, yeah, so in um, .NET Core, what we use is components as opposed to partials nowadays. You can still use them, they're still valid, but um, it's also good to know about these components. So if we create a new class in here and we'll call it view, oh, sorry, um, this will be navigation, main nav view component dot CS. And in that view component, um, we're going to have um, actually, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch. Now I won't cheat and switch to Visual Studio Code. Just bear with me a sec. I'll go to an example one. <laughs> I'll cheat that way. So yeah, this is my example one. I'm going to put it here and then pretend I know what I'm doing and just uh, type it out and you just follow along. <laughs> so yeah, so um, this will be using Microsoft.ASP.NETCORE uh, MVC. So it's going to have use that namespace and then and then it's going to be namespace is going to be freelancer.site.components. And then in .NET Core as well now, you can just do this file scope namespaces if you want. And then we can do a view component. So we have to tell it that it's a view component and we give it a name. I think this is optional. It can work it out for you. I've done that wrong. So I'll just do name equals. This could be optional, but I always give it a name. So I'm going to call this main nav. And then we'll do a public class, um, main nav view component. And this has to inherit from view component. And that was the reason why we use that ASP Netcore MVC. Um, so then what we want to do is we do a public uh, I view component uh, result method and we call it invoke. Oh, I don't know why it's done that. And then inside that you can pass in things. Um, now we don't have to pass in anything and on this one we're not going to and then we'll just do return view. So that is the very basic uh, one and then the reason why we've done this is because we want to put the main navigation inside a partial elsewhere and we're not just using the old way of doing partials we're using components so we go to views and then we create another folder in here and we'll call this um, components so we had a components at the root and that's for the c sharp code and now we've got a components inside views and then we've going to have another folder called main nav and then inside that folder we're going to have a file called uh, default now you can if you want to um, name this differently and people have different opinions on that it's all down to your style and what you want to do but you can call this differently you just have to wire it up to know that it's called something different 
uh, but I'm just going with the default. Uh, in, there's a good tip for you in Visual Studio. Um, even though we're not necessarily using Visual Studio, I thought it'd be a good time just to show you this. So if I go to my project, um, freelancer.solution, there's a, there's a really handy extension and it's called Add New. Um, and I've, I find it really useful when adding things like this. And I'm, I'll be honest, I might be quicker. I think I don't need to stick with, I, I will be honest, I'm quicker in Visual Studio. So let's stay in Visual Studio from now on, but just know that you can do all of this in Visual Studio code. But you see how we had the views here and we got the components and we had that main nav. Well, let's say uh, if I wanted to, I could just do shift, uh, shift F2 and I can now use my add new extension and I can do Bob dot, CSHTML, and that will create a file at that point there. Well, that's not that impressive, but what if you wanted to do this? Um, if I select the folder, do Shift F2 again, and I've got a new component that I want to add. So my component could be called footer, and then I do slash default dot CSHTML, and that will then create the folder and the file for me. And also it detects the type as well by the extension. So if I wanted to create the um, component at this point, I could do footer uh, view component dot CS add file. And that will then create it as a class for us. And it, if you put an I in front of the name, it will create it as an interface as well. So that's just a nice little extension. So it's just called uh, add new. I think it's add new 64 bit or something like that. So if you're using Visual Studio 22, then you should get that. So yeah, while we've done that, I've just created that footer view component at the same time. I'm gonna delete Bob, unfortunately. We don't need Bob anymore. Um, so yeah, we've got our main nav uh, there. So what we can do is we can go into our master. We can grab that nav. We can cut that and we can go back into default and save. So we don't actually need it to have to have anything up here at the moment. It's just going to render out this view. And then in our master template, we just do at await component dot invoke async. And then we can tell it which one we want to do. And that's main nav. And then we can have a look on the front end. Now we should see that this is well, I would have thought it would be trying to uh, recompile the code, but it's not doing. So I'm just going to control C anyway and just force it to. And while I wait for that, I'll just check if there's anything in the chat, any questions or anything. Oh, you use the add new all the time. That's good. I thought component views are by default under views shared. Oh. Uh, I don't know if they are, they might be. Um, right, so this didn't like footer view component. Oh yeah, because I didn't implement it fully. So yeah, I could be wrong, it might have to go in shared, but I've always had it just in components there, uh, Robert, but we'll see, we'll see if it works. Um, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm just gonna implement this. And then we'll do control dot to get the namespace in. And I've mapped a key binding as well for control U to remove and sort unused using. So I like to, to do that. So that should be okay now. Um, and yes, I want to restart the app. So let's get that to rebuild for us. Um, just double check, yep. I think we've got, uh, oh, one thing we don't have is the name yet. And also it's good to see here the difference. That one looks a lot smaller and cleaner just because we're using the file scope namespace. This one's more indented, I think. Uh, more, I, I just prefer the new file scope namespaces. Anyway, let's see, the site's loaded up and we do have a nav, so that's good. 
So let's just dissect all of these other things as well. Just put them into these. Uh, it does take a bit longer doing it this way, but it is the way we are taught to do it in .NET Core. It's not the only way to do things. Right, we've got a footer. So I've located the footer. Let's stick that in there. Control C that and put that in footer. Then all we're doing at the moment is just moving things around. So, oh, wrong bit. Let's put that in there. Name equals footer. And make that file scoped. Control, yeah, there we go. Right, hopefully that is, yeah, it's doing another build. And then we can go to our view as well in the master and we can just do that. We can just basically copy what we put and paste it in. Butter. Yeah, so it's still there, it likes it. Uh, let's just check, see if it's actually picked that up. Uh, from going here. I, I do see what people say about default. When you see the tabs up here, default, default, it's a bit annoying because it's like they're just the same every time. Um, but if we just do a change, but test in there and save, let's just see. Yeah, so it is being served from that component. So that's good. So we can delete that. Uh, I'll try not to spend too long on these components, but let's uh, just dissect the rest. There's only a few parts to this page anyway. So that's the footer. Then we've got a copyright statement at the end. And then we've got these portfolio modals. They're the things that open up. Um, we've got a portfolio section and we've got a master head. So we've got a header. So we can, we can cut that one out. Oh, I always cut too soon. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy this, I think, and just re do a bit of renaming, a bit of cheating. Um, header view component. And you might want to just think about when you're building these, you might want to think like, well, what there might be multiple types of header. So you might not want to just call it header. But for this simple site, we're just going to do it like this. And then we can easily create that. Uh, header slash default dot CSHTML. And then in our master, let's cut that out. Paste that in there, save. Copy that, paste that. Go into header view component. Yeah, got all of that. So fingers crossed. Um, it didn't seem to do a rebuild. All right, let me just go back in here and just change this to be header and save. Now I do dot note watch run again, just to get it running again. Oh, let's have a look at this while we wait. Uh, from the docs, the search path, the runtime searches for the views in the following paths. RK views, controller name components, views, shared components, pages, shared components, Oh, so projects using controllers and views and razor pages. So all good. All right, thank you for that. So we've still got a header, we've still got a footer, we've still got a nav. So uh, we're just splitting this up. So now we've got the portfolio section and after that we've got an about section and a contact section. So let's do the about and contact. I'm just going to try and do the same uh, contact default.cshtml and then again oh, portfolio and all of those mo modals I'm going to put in there um, slash default oops dot cshtml okay um, 
Right, so contact first. Cut that one. Go into contact view partial. And go back go back to master. Put that in there as contact. I'll do the C sharp stuff after. I feel like I'm on some sort of cooking program. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> uh, master. Yeah, we'll stick the about page in there now. You just do this, leave it for about 45 minutes. Job done. <laughs> right, so that's the about one. So let's go back to the master and just do that. So you can see how just building up the page and then we've got the portfolio one and like I said I'm going to do the portfolio part with the modals as well so I'm going to just make a bit of space for these put that in front of them and then I can paste it all together just check what I'm picking up here so that's the last of the modals Right, there we go. Cut that. And then put that in there. So now we've got all of those dissected. Let's slice up the meat. Uh, portfolio. And then we'll go to our view components and we'll just copy this a few times. So we'll do one called about, well, this could have been a more generic name, but it's not going to be. You, if you, if you've got time, you can make it more generic. Um, the good thing about all of this with these view components is you can inject services and things like that in here as well. So if we wanted to, um, I could pass in. I could do like public about view component and then I could do um, I member service or whatever. And I can have, oh, I know there's a quick way of doing this, by the way. So it's probably killing someone who's watching this now. Um, I private read only I member service. Um, member service. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I know there is something that's a bit quicker to do that, but there we go. And then I'll just make sure that that's there. So that's how we can use our dependency injection on this. So if we wanted to for this specific component, we can do that. Also with the view components, they don't know about the current request, I believe. Uh, I see them a little bit like macros in that you can just pass it your parameters that you want it to do and it just does its thing. But you also got the dependency injection and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so now this about one can access the member service if we want. <laughs> I don't know why I'd want to do that. So I'm just going to undo that. Right, have we done them all? So we've got about, oh no, we're nowhere near. Let's do a portfolio one. Uh, going slower now, the longer I go. Portfolio, and then what was the other one? There was another one. But, uh, I've done footer. Oh, we've got about, contact, oh, that was it. And there's some more things in the chat. Uh, there we go. You should also be able to use the helper syntax. Oh, yeah. I've never had success with that, actually. I, I will try that one day. Thanks for uh, sharing that. People watching the video, there is a help, a tag helper, which open angle bracket, VC, and then colon, and then you put the component name in, and then closing 
forward slash angle bracket. Right, where was I? I always get distracted when I read the comments. Contact view component. Right, we've got all of our view components. They're nearly done, just got to make sure they're all named correctly. And let's just go through them. So it's a, quite a bit of scaffolding really for these. Like you could just stick them in a partial and just call that partial. But, oh well, I've decided to go this way to be a bit different to the videos I've already done. But in upcoming videos in my series, you'll probably see me talk about this. Uh, quick dependency injection, add the private member first, alt enter, and then select add parameters to seat or probably a keyboard shortcut. Cheers for that, Nathan. I thought you might know. Uh, cool. So we've got all of those things and we've got content in all of these things. Yeah. And did we add all of them, them to here? So we've got the main nav header about contact footer and portfolio. So it's tidied this up no end. So that's good. Um, and while we're at it, let's just put in here, we'll do at model.name and then we'll just do like pipe and then the site name is going to be Melbourne Meetup. I got told off by my boss for calling it Melbourne the other day. <laughs> We've got a Melbourne near us. He's like, you want? <laughs> I never did the accent then. <laughs> anyway, carrying on. Uh, so let's do a build. Do I need to do a build? Oh, why does it keep asking me? Just do dot net watch run. And we should see the uh, site come up. Oh, it's poorly at the moment. Let's just see if it's happy when it reloads. If not, it's okay. We'll fix it. We always fix it. I always got errors in my videos anyway. <laughs> it's rustic. Hey, oh, something died. Something failed. <laughs> Contact me. Oh, yeah. Have I just put things the wrong way around? <laughs> I think that's all I've done wrong. I just put the portfolio at the bottom. Oh, that's all right then. Don't mind that. Let's cut that out. I think portfolio went there. Probably you saw, you thought that already. And you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, there we go. All sorted. So now it's in place. Um, we've dissected. We've done things like that. So um, on my videos next, normally what I would do is go and do the navigation. Uh, let's do a quick version of the nav. So you can just make the nav up either with a multiple links choice picker or mega nav or umb nav and things like that. So there's specific packages for that, or you could use you could iterate through the, the content of the site. As we don't have any content, that's a bit pointless. So what I might do is I might just do a composition uh, called navigation properties um, or main navigation properties um, main navigation properties and they always say properties because I might want to add more to it <laughs> and I'm going to pick the pink eye the pink icon for this and then I'd, I don't know why that went black and then in here I'll just do nav navigation I'm going to add this to the home node add the property so this is going to be called uh, main navigation and I'm just going to have a multi URL picker so if we start typing URL we've got pickers multi URL picker that will do submit that I'm going to choose reorder I'm going to make this 50 Mark Goodson taught me to go in tens with the tabs and fives with the properties and then you can slot things in between from other compositions and things like that uh, cheers, Dean. And yeah, you'll be able to catch up on YouTube, whatever you missed. Uh, save that. So now, if I then go into pages and go on the home page, compositions, click on main nav properties, submit that and save. We'll see on the home page we now have a navigation one. And then we can just choose what pages we want it to go to. So we can either pick using this to pick pages within the site, or we can just cheat and just do like hash. So <laughs> Um, well, let's do about, oh no, actually they were to go to different 
they are actually ne needing to be hashes. So that's not cheating. Uh, because of the way this is a one pager, it needs to go down to those things. So we can still build this nav like this. So we'll do about, and then the title will be called about. Submit that. And then we'll do portfolio. And do hash portfolio. And then what's the other one? Contact. And that one is the last one. So we'll do when we render the contact one, we'll do something special. Probably have to add an extra class. Uh, for now, we'll just keep it simple like this. Contact. Oh, can't spell. Submit and save that. So now we've got our navigation. We need to rebuild our models. So we'll go into settings here, models builder, generate models. That's rebuilt the models for us. And then it's going to say, do you want me to restart? Yeah. Go in here, go onto the templates and go into the uh, main nav. So um, by default, I think the model that will get passed to this should be the the model that gets passed to it i think should be the uh, i publish content we'll see so we'll just do um at inherits umbraco view page and we'll just leave it like that at the moment and i'm what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do in in the part which is the brand i'm just going to do at model dot name and we'll just see i think this is right well it could be wrong but that should say home there yeah it does say home uh don't necessarily want to call it that we can just call this melbourne meetup and we could use a dictionary item for that so if i save that and refresh that's good and just quickly cover dictionaries and a whistle stop tour in the translation section you can create a dictionary item and i'm going to call this site name create that and then i'm going to say melbourne Whoop. meetup save that and now in here i can do at umbraco dictionary uh, get dictionary value and then I can just put in site name like that and if we go to the front end of the site there we go still says Melbourne meter so that's the dictionary usage and we can take that as well and we can put that in our master at the top where we where we put that in there so now that's not hard coded anymore Yeah, browser tab says home Melbourne meetup. So that's cool. Um, these I've not wired up yet. So let's just quickly loop through those. So we built the models. So we should be able to um, loop through that main nav. If we wanted to be specific about the model that is in here, we could um, we could do, but we, um, maybe I'll just tell it that it, it only ever gets called from the, no, it's not the home page. Uh, yeah, I'll, I will. I'll make it the home page. So if I do. Now, there's a thing as well that would be good to do. So in home page template, there's a using here. Using content models equals this. So all I want to do is grab that, cut it out of there. And then there's a thing in this .NET called view imports. So I'm going to put it in here so that I don't have to reference that every time. So now I can always know that content models is available to me. So now that I've saved that, it should yeah make that one happy. So then when I'm on my uh, nav, now I can just do content models dot homepage. And it will know about that one because it's in that view imports. Well, it should know about that one. I just didn't spell it right. That's why it doesn't. So yeah, that and then what i need to do from the master is i just need to make sure that whenever i call this nav i always get the home page first so at the top of here 
I can do var home page equals um, model dot ancestor or self and then the home page is the type so that will get the first uh, home page from where I am now or through the tree up to where I'm you know up to the top level and from that I can then pass that as my model property into the main nav so like that so if I'm on an about page or anything like that, it will actually know it's the home page. Uh, it will still be able to pass the home page in, which has got the properties that we need. So if we refresh this, hopefully it's not broken on me. It's not broken, so that's good. And then uh, well, let's implement the nav. So if we go to um, the main nav, so because we've got the home page, we can actually access the properties on the home page. Um, so that says menu, we could stick that in the dictionary, but let's not worry about that. So it's really, it's here. So at if um, model, so remember we're in the home page. So uh, nav, uh, main navigation isn't null and model dot main navigation dot any. If anyone's got a better way of doing that, that's less verbose than I'm up for seeing that in the chat. And then with inside that at uh, UL, uh, that URL I'll do that for each bar item in model dot main navigation. So now I'm going to loop through them. This is called razor syntax. So this is C sharp within HTML. Um, yeah, that's why we do this. So if you are starting a code block, you need to use the at symbol. If you're already inside a code block, you don't need to use the at symbol. Um, this might look like I'm already inside a code block, but the problem is that the HTML got in the way um, and that HTML didn't close. So therefore, I still need the at symbol. But if that was either before or after the UL, then it wouldn't need the at symbol. Anyway, uh, we'll just grab this li, cut that, paste that in there, and we'll just make reference to oh actually the styling just picks up the last one anyway so that's cool so we'll just do at item dot name i think it is so that will be the name in there the href will be at item dot link oh url uh, i think that's it so if we do save now reload this we should see about is the wrong way around a portfolio as for some reason i didn't set the name on the portfolio one so we can do that we can go back in and edit that and just fix that issue submit and then we can reorder them so the good thing about this is you get to reorder so i'm just going to save and publish so it's in the correct order that it was originally so now um we've got issues <laughs> So um, that didn't work and I'm closing all my tabs for some reason. All oh, right, I've, I've updated the link and not the name of it. I don't know what I'm doing here, going to part. Uh, yeah, I just need to make sure that that, oh, I just did it the wrong way around, that's all. Submit that and save and publish. But you can imagine if you, if you did have actual pages to go off to, then it would do that. But yeah, this is good. So it's still working. Um, the nav now is wired up. So if you wanted to add extra things and actually go off to other pages, you could. Um, so that's the navigation. So let's have a look at the content. And so what about this page do we want to implement? So we've got the header. Uh, if we wanted to, we could have that as a block list, but we'll leave that till the portfolio, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to implement the header quickly. So I'm going to create a new tab. So I'll just do a new composition, um, call it header properties. Click on this. How are we doing for time, Emmanuel? Still okay for a bit? Yep, we're still good. We've got 21 minutes to go. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure people would stick around for a few minutes longer. Yep. All right. Well, I'll try and at least um, implement one or two of the block listings. Um, 
anyway let's carry on so header properties i've done so i'm going to add a tab called header i'm going to give it the reorder i'm going to make this one 10 and i'm going to reorder the other one oh yeah is that right i'm done reordering now i want to add a property so i want to do title enter a title for this header now what i could do here is i could oh, don't worry about it i'm just going to choose a text string just bear in mind you can build these up in different ways this is just a simple example so what's on this page i'm sorry if i keep flicking about there so i've got a title an image and a subtitle that's how i'm seeing that one i've lost my tab help oh it's there so we've got a title i've got an image now i don't just want it to be just called image because this is on a page and that's not going to be very helpful and also with title like this sort of thing is good when you're building it on the block list elements but when it's on a page at a page level so i might just call it page title and i'm going to use this unlock bit here to edit the alias we don't like to leave aliases not the same as the property so there's a page title and then we'll just do um, header image. So that way, if this page has something else and it wanted to be called image, it's more specific about it. And as well with the model, with the models builder, it's clear that it's a model dot and then header image. So choose an image for this header uh, image. There we go. So I've choos chosen the image media picker set that and then i think i'll just do subtitle enter a subtitle for this header string oh wrong one i chose a label and that was basically a meet a read only so i can choose a click change and just type string again and select that and submit and then i think i'll reorder these as well so I want to have header image first, and then I want to have page title next, and then oop, that's 10. And then I want 15 for the subtitle, and I'm done. And I'm just going to rename the subtitle to be page subtitle. So save that and get the home page to be composed from that. Submit that and save. I'm going to delete the test properties one because we don't need it now. I'm not referencing it from anywhere either, but it does warn you and it's saying any document types or pages using this, it's going to get deleted. So beware. I remember in V7, if I changed anything, it just used to blow up the site in the early V7. I was really scared of it, but and Braco's got a lot cleverer about these things these days. So now we've got a navigation, we've got a content, but do we have a header? That's weird that it's not showing up. I'll just go into home. No, it's not there. I must have done something wrong here. Oh, where did I put all these properties? Anybody know? <laughs> That's weird, it's lost them all. What was I saying about being scared of it? Um, gosh, sorry about that. Uh, page title. Hopefully it'll be a bit quicker this time around. I don't know why it's lost all of that. Really weird. Uh, yeah, don't know. Sub uh, Page subtitle. You can make these properties um, you can, if you want to, you can make these required, but I'm not going to. I like to work on the basis that nothing is required if I can. Right, I'm going to be careful of this. So I'm going to do 10, I'm going to do 15, I'm going to do five. Uh, I'm done reordering and I reorder this to make this 10. I'm done reordering, save that. Pray that it stays. 
basic content, I'm going to reorder and make that uh, 20. Ah, oh, not the body text, that can be five, but I'll make this to be 20. I'm done reordering, save that now. Does the home page, yeah, it's got it. It's got a header, it's got the content, it's got navigation. Cool, so let's go to settings. Let's do models builder, build the models, and then have a look at home. I've got a profile image we can see. Oh, I've seen it. So Stephen Adams, I've seen that before in V10 myself. I think there's a missing warning when you navigate off the item without saving. Is that what I did? Oh, thanks for that. Well, we've got video evidence, so we can watch it back if we really care. <laughs> right, I don't know why this is taking forever. Anyway, so header image. So I'm going to pick one from my desktop. So this is the... When you choose an image like this, you can pick one that's already there or you can upload one. So I think it's safe to navigate to here, and pick one from me. So I'll select that. And then what does it currently say? Start bootstrap. So um, I don't know, all seal, page subtitle, what does it say? Graphic artist, Umbraco developer. Um, Etc. <laughs> Save and publish that. And then what we can do is we can use those properties on the header. So we've got the header. And what we want to do now on this one is we just want to, if we look in Models Builder, we can see that the home page, so this isn't necessarily tied to a home page. We want this to be more tied to the interface that is the header properties. So you see this header properties here. So I header properties. So what we can do is we can go to that partial view there, header, and we can just do at inherits on Braco view page. Oops. Yeah, and then angle brackets, I header properties. So then anything that's calling this should have a I header properties. And we could have done that with the main navigation as well, but 11 learn. Uh, so we've got the image, so we can do uh, at model dot image, header image. So that is, we don't have an alt text at the moment, but we could do at model dot header image dot name, perhaps. And that header image is going to fail, isn't it? So URL, I could either crop this, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as that. You, there is a, a crop, an image cropper in Umbraco, so be aware of that. So the heading, so that's at model.page title. And then we've got some dividers here. Oh yeah, and then at model.subtitle or oh, page subtitle. There we go. So we'll save that. Let's see if it's picked up the change. I don't know if it has. We'll have a look. It's a view, so it should be okay. Hey terrible though because it's square image <laughs> um but yeah you should be able to do something about that um that image being like that maybe i could just have a class of rounded no oh yeah we've got uh, that's better <laughs> um right so then we'll try and just do one of these i think it'd be better to just do the portfolio um might be a big ask, but we've got 12 minutes. Let's give it a go. Um, so on the portfolio, what is it made up of? It's made up of uh, six items. And these items have got a name, an image, and a description. So that name can be like a title. So this will give me a chance to talk to you about how I do uh, block list things. <clears throat> so in my course, well, let's say it's not a course, it's just a free YouTube video. Uh, these are how I do the images. Uh, sorry, these are how I do the block lists and things and document types for them. So I have a content model, a setting model and things, uh, and I split them out. And <clears throat> these are repeatable things that I might want to use in different blocks. So on this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a block. All right, Alistair, I'll see you later. <clears throat> So in our compositions, I'm going to create another folder in compositions. 
and this is for content blocks. So this is like for reusable elements that I'm going to use within content blocks. And in there, I'm going to have it reusable for models and reusable for settings. So I'm going to put another one called models in here. So it might look a weird structure, but hopefully it'll make sense. And it's a convention that I'll try and follow. So in this, I'm going to create a composition. And instead of using uh, pink, I use this navy color just to differentiate it. So this is like a block list, a block item uh, thingy. We'll go for thingy because I don't remember what I'm saying. So I'm going to do title property. And this is called property because it's purposely just one property. Um, I think I'll just put it in content tab. I can't remember if I do it as a group or a tab. We'll go with that. And then this is just going to be called title. Um, I'm not going to put description just for speed. Whoops. Text string submit. That's one property. So on there as well, there was a title, there was an image, and there was a description. And that was literally it. So we do an image. Whoops. Image media picker. And then we'll do a description. And this will be a text area. Title, oh no, what am I doing? I've lost the plot again, delete that. No, we're gonna build it up. <laughs> so I'm gonna create that as another composition. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It's really weird. The longer you go on, the more you just lose it. Right. So this is going to be called an image property. And I'll just do image. Image. Choose that. Save. And then the last one that we need for this demo is the description. property. So try and keep that naming convention going. Content uh, and then just call this description and then do text area. Submit that and save. So now I've got those three that I can use. Um, I will then on my uh, so in elements I'll create a similar sort of structure. So this will be content blocks. And then under that, I will do content models. And then under that, let me just check. Uh, yeah, so now I will create myself a model. So this is gonna be a portfolio item. So this is gonna be an element type. So these are repeating elements that we use in our content blocks. So this is gonna be called a portfolio item and I'm going to do like a card icon there we are um, what I want to do is use composition now to pick I want a, a title an image and a description on my element there we are so we've got those three items there um, and if we want, if we were concerned about the order, we can just make sure that title is five, image is 10, and description is 15, or whatever sizes you want. So that then for our portfolio item, it's got it in the correct order for us. And then we want now I don't call it an yeah I do call it an item because I'm going to have a portfolio row which is going to be a repeating list of portfolio items <sighs> right so this is going to be a reach to get to this but let's do it so I've got a portfolio item so now what I need I need to create a new data type and this will be called block list portfolio items 
the property editor I want to use is the block list and the available blocks. So I want to use an element, content models, portfolio item. And in there, I've got pre-prepared a bit of text. So we can use something called uh, an Angular template here. So if it's got a title, we'll use that. Otherwise, we'll just say portfolio item and we'll use the index that this is, so in the list. And then if it's got a settings, then we'll set it, which we'll say is hidden if not. Now we don't have settings, but I will create one. So we'll come back to that. So I'm just gonna create that. Now in here where we've got content blocks, we'll do setting models. And I'll just check, see my name and convention. Is it setting or set? Yeah, setting models. There we go. And then, so for every content model that I create, I always create a setting as well. And I'll call this, yeah, so it's an element type as well. So this is exactly the name. The convention I use is exactly the same name as the model, portfolio item, but settings at the end. And I'll just use a cog. I use that blue and then cog. And what I want to do is um, in here, I'll do a setting models folder in the compositions. And then I'll just do one called block visibility property. Uh, yeah, composition block visibility property make that the blue color and then I'll just add this in settings tab add a property and this will be um, hide set this to true if you want to hide this item so this is used when um, like a bit like if you remember nested content and uh, no yeah there's nested content and there was archetype and you could uh, turn off an item with archetype like with the power button so that's how i'm using this in that sort of approach click on that sorry if i've lost anyone i feel like i've gone up really simple and now right really complicated so hopefully it will redeem itself um i'm going to comp you do compositions block visibility property so now we have a settings um, item for that. So we can go back down to our data type and then click on this and then we can choose that settings model comp uh, elements, content blocks, settings model, portfolio item settings. You can do all sorts of configuration on these, but we're running out of time. If you want to know more, there's more in my videos, but let's carry on. So I've got portfolio items. Now we just need to create ourselves a, a, a block list item for the row type so we'll do a new element type so we'll do portfolio row and i'm just going to do a list one like that and i'm going to choose the color same color as the others i should have done the blue oh well i'll do that blue again portfolio row so um on this, all it's going to have, so it's going to have a content tab and it's not a reusable one, this isn't. So this will just be portfolio items. Choose the items or this row. So I'm not going to put this into a composition or anything like that. And I'm going to look for a block list portfolio items, submit that and save. And then I need a portfolio row settings. So if I create myself another composition, is it an, ah, did I create this as an element or a composition? Um, it's still an element type, so that's fine. But yeah, I need to create these as element types. So this will be portfolio row settings. So again, keeping that same name convention, And on this, I will just, again, choose the, the visibility one, submit and save, and make sure that that one had one. 
Yeah, so they've both got it. So now I need to create a new data type. So this will be main content, block list main content. And then I would pick property editor block list and the available blocks is going to be element types. And instead of it being the item, it'll be the row. And then in here, uh, I will just copy what I had over here. Um, oh, it's not got a title, so I won't use the title. I'll, all, I, all I'm going to do portfolio row like that. I'm not going to try and do this. That should still work. And then I can choose portfolio row settings. All right, okay, we're all set up now. So we've got our block list main content. So where we've got our basic content properties, we'll just, for quickness, we'll just add this. So we'll just do main content. And this type is gonna use the block list. So all of that work was just so we can now use the block list do save and then let's see what happens if we rebuild the models if we make sure that this oh yeah it's doing a build to be fair i've not be, i've not been 90 minutes yet because we didn't start for at least 10 minutes <laughs> that's so, true that's true <laughs> yeah technically <laughs> yep so we, we we can take uh, i guess uh yeah, most people here are okay, I guess, with 10 minutes more. Yeah, cool. So now, instead of using this block list, I'm going to use this main content here, and I'm going to add a row. So um, because it knows it's only got just, it knows it's only got one row configured, the row type, and that's portfolio. So it just leaves it like that. But then you can choose the portfolio row items. So let's have a look at what we had. We had this one called log cabin, and it had a picture of a log, yeah log cabin and the image well i'm going to be struggling here i don't want another one of me um so what i'll do is i'll just try and find the project and i'll just try and pick the images from the assets folder hey select that um we'll just lower a bit some it but not as much. Just do it like that. Now, the good thing with the block list is that you can copy items. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. Um, yeah, I'm going to copy that one and paste it a few times. Create. Now say published. So what I've got there is I've got six of the same type of item there picked and we can edit them if you want. We, what we can do is we can just choose another one of those images on the second one. We'll do cake. Just so you can see a difference. So it doesn't just look, oh, well done. You've just repeated the same item. So we've got that now. Uh, and you can see that the name it pulled through as portfolio row. Uh, if we wanted to on that section, it does have a title. So really by rights, we should just go back into here, document types on the elements, content models, portfolio row, we should add a title. So we can go to um, title property and add that. And then we can do a reorder and make sure that this portfolio items is 10. So it will always come below it. So then we can go to the settings, just make sure that We've rebuilt our models and then go to content and click on home. The implementation of the front end should be quick anyway for this. It's doing the rebuild, that's why it's taking a few seconds. Go on this. So, portfolio row, it's got a title, don't know why it's ended up down there. Um, oh well, it doesn't matter. We can always just know you can use the reorder. Right, so we do have a title for that. And if we wanted to, we could 
update that label template if we wanted to, but we're not going to. So we've built the models and everything like that. We've got our content. So let's try and quickly just implement this then. So if we go to portfolio uh, and we just need to have that main content on our on here. So if we're going to have main content for now, just for quickness, what I'm going to do. Oh, no, it's basic content property. That's it. So we want I basic book content property. So on our portfolio, we'll just do this. We'll just do at model, oh, sorry, at inherits and Braco view page. I basic content property. And then what we need to do now is just uh, call the Uh, I think, wait, but wait there. Sorry, let me just check my clean site. I think I need to move it out of a component now and into the block list components. Just bear with me. Yeah, so just need to move it out of there and also change the name. So this portfolio one, instead of having this here, what we do is we create a new folder, call it a block list. And then in that we can create another folder called components. Have I already got that? No, what am I doing? Sorry, delete that. It's already in the partials folder. Block list, yeah, there we go. So I create a folder in here called components. And then I want my portfolio one. Oh, I've created it as a file, delete that. Shift F2, components. Now you see this here, let's just drag that into there, okay. Delete that one from here. Okay, and then we just have to rename this to be um, portfolio row. So it needs to be the alias of whatever that block is. And that means then that actually the, if I go into one of my example ones, just because I got a little bit lost here. Yeah, so the, it just inherits the block list item like that. And then we work out, we, we, we create the row. So if I go like with this, so I would do portfolio row. And then I would get the settings by doing it like this, portfolio row settings. And then if settings is set to high, then just return nothing. And then if the row dot portfolio items is not is, is null or row dot portfolio items doesn't have any, then I return as well. And I don't worry about that carousel ID for now. So now we have our items, we have our row and everything like that. Um, we, this is our title. So this will be at row dot title because we've got that property. Um, and then this is our grid items. So we already know there are some, so we can just start looping through them. So for each bar item, and I've got a naming convention for that as well. Yeah, for, in row dot portfolio items, that's it. And then we can type these to be a portfolio item type as well. So we can just, copy this bit snippet that I've got here. So it, row item equals, and then we just tell it to be a portfolio item. So we're using the casting there in C sharp. And then again there. So now in this, 
is where we use that. And then we can just tell it to have the uh, at row item uh, dot image dot URL. So that's the image URL. That's that can be the at row item dot image dot name. And then that's all we use on this at this level. So that's going to loop through those. And then we also need to loop through again to do the uh, pop out things. Do we change anything? All right, so it's got portfolio modal and then it's got the, the ID number there. So that's what we just need to make sure we do. So we can use, I'm going to put this inside the block. Nearly done now, by the way. So what I'm, we're going to do is have that index be um, incremented each time. And I'm going to use that index in here. Just put that in brackets so it's clear that this is a variable that I'm sticking on the end there. I can't see any other place to add a variable so that will do for now uh, so that that is going to increment through that and then the last part is the modals so let's just take this again and just loop through them separately outside of the section so if I put that in there And we'll do var item index just to give it a different name. And then what we want to do is just loop through them. So we'll grab one of these and we'll put it in here. And then we'll just say the name of it. So that will be at row item dot name. Uh, title. This is the at item index. Um, and again, just make sure we do that. And so we've got the title, we've got the star line, we've got the image. So we just do at row item dot image dot url and again with the alt at row item I could skip the alt but I don't think we should ever skip the alt but you can implement an alt property on the images as well that's probably better and then that is the content so we did that as a text area so we need to put it within the p tag so this is at row item dot description have a quick look now for any more IDs. I don't know if I've missed any, but we will soon see when it doesn't work. And then we'll just cut this out here. And then the last thing to do on the template, I think, is do at HTML dot get block list or something like that. So where we've got portfolio, we can just then do at HTML dot get block list HTML and we'll do model and the property alias was main content I think I think that's all right let's just control C and prepare for it to fall over uh, and then spend one minute trying to pick up the pieces and then if not um, I'll just fix it and push it to the github repo anyway and I'll put in using on there as well so that you can pull down all the doc types and everything like that. Let's see, please work. It'd be nice if it just worked first time. New, no. so um, uh, did I? Doesn't recognize block list item. Oh, is it just a namespace? Oh, that's easy.
So let me just check, see what namespace I need to make sure. Oh, I think I put it in my view imports in this example project that I did. So let me just get my view imports. Yeah, using, yeah, there we go. So in the view imports, if we put this, then that will reference it for us. I don't know if that needs to do a new rebuild or not, but we'll just do it just in case. So now it should know about that model thing. Please work after all that, come on. So if it does work, we should see one log cabin and then the rest are, uh, the next one is a cake and then the rest are log cabins again. Oh, yay, it's worked. Woo so that says log cabin. That one says nothing because it didn't work. <laughs> Technically, let's just claim that as a victory. It did something similar to what we said it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. Sorry, I feel like I've waffled on forever. No, no, that was good. Um, that was awesome. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I learned a few uh, tips and tricks while watching that. So that was always good. Good. Um, yeah, anybody else has uh, any other comments? You can, uh, I might, uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. I might just stop the recording so that you can, you don't have yeah, to be doing Yeah, thank you. Editing. Uh,